here to talk about performance and culture, Tony Schwartz. So hi, everybody. Can I have these lights a little lower just because uh, I like to see the audience? Um, so why do I have my Blackberry here? Because I want to read you the back and forth that I had with Terry, who's put, helped put this whole uh, conference together in the last eight minutes of Peter Goober's laid back talk. Um, so we get to about eight minutes before, and I went into some combination of a panic and a, an opportunity for a experiential lesson. And I wrote to Terry, I texted Terry, God bless modern technology for whatever other things I may say about it during this talk. I said, Terry, they can't possibly listen to what I have to say without a break and a quick chance to go to the bathroom. Can I give them five? He writes back, no way to get people back in five. It won't happen. <laughs> I write back, yes, but it's a huge lesson for people. He writes back and says, OK, encourage them to go quickly, and we'll see what happens. <laughs> Tell them you're changing things up, OK? I said, yes, I'll, I'll make them race. It's a great lesson for them. And here we are. Am I popular? <laughs> Listen, this is the very heart of what I'm here to talk to you about. It is the dead center. Nothing I could have said could have given you as good a lesson as you just got. You could not have listened to me in any attentive way if you had had to sit for another full hour, could you? There's no way. I was afraid that by the end of the talk, I'd be going like this. And so would you. I can have your time. I have your time. You're not going to go out the door. It's too embarrassing. But if I don't have your energy, what does it matter that I have your time? So now I've got your energy back because you've had a chance to refuel it. So it's, let's see if I can capture the feeling of the intensity of your life and the impact that it's having. Because this part, this hour together, is about you. It's really about helping you. And I want you to imagine it's 7 AM, somewhere here in San Jose. And Johnny, who's going to be the star of this story, and who I want you to think of as yourself, and then see if that resonates. Johnny has just woken up. He's supposed to be downstairs for breakfast by 7.15 and out the door to school by 7.30. Father is in the kitchen making breakfast, because his mom's already gone to work. It's a modern family. Goes to the bottom of the stairs. Calls up to Johnny, doesn't yell, modern dad. Johnny, you're going to be late. Your breakfast is getting cold. Hurry on down. Johnny yells back, I'm not going to school today. Father trots up the stairs, doesn't say anything. Sits down on the foot of Johnny's bed. Johnny's got the covers. Remember, this is you. Johnny's got the covers pulled up all the way to his chin. Says, OK, Johnny, give me three good reasons why you're not going to school today. Johnny says, fine. Number one. I don't like the kids. Number two, the kids don't like me. And number three, it's too hard. Father says, OK, Johnny, now I'm going to give you three good reasons why you are going to school today. Number one, I'm your father. And I'm telling you, you're going to school today. Number two, you're 47 years old. <laughs> and number three, you're the principal of the school. It's tough out there. We know that feeling, don't we? You've got a lot of principles in this room. We know that feeling of the covers up against the, the chin, and I don't want to do it again. How many of you would say that as you look back over the past three years, the demand in your life has significantly increased? How many agree? OK, so pretty much everybody. Given that, how hard you've been working over the past three years, which is harder than probably you've ever worked, how many of you believe that the demand is going to get still higher in the next three years? Again, almost everybody. I see one guy over here who's about to retire who's cool. <laughs> Relaxed. 
So here's the $64,000 question. If the demand is as high as it's ever been, and it's only going to get still higher, how many of you believe that your capacity to meet that demand is going to rise right along with the demand? There's eight people in the group that think it is. Why isn't that more alarming? I mean, think about that. That's not a casual question. If your demand is already incredibly high and it's going to get still higher and your capacity isn't going to rise to meet that demand, isn't that an issue? Why isn't it an issue? Why hasn't it been an issue? Here's the answer. We take capacity for granted. If your capacity exceeds your demand, which in most of our lives it historically has, we've had more fuel in the tank than we absolutely needed to get things done, why would you think about your capacity? But the whole game has changed. We've hit an inflection point. The whole deal is different, and it's changed very recently. I've just recognized, I've just written a, a piece that's about to come out in the New York Times about this shift, this inflection point, this tipping point, in which I realized in writing it that I could mark it to a specific day and moment in time. It was July 19th last year, July 19th, 2010. I was standing in a parking lot at Google with a very senior executive where we do our work. We've taken 4,500 people at Google so far through the work that I'm going to talk to you about today. And I'm standing with this executive at one of the most progressive employee ba companies in the world. And this guy is one of the most upbeat human beings in the world. And as I'm about to get into my car, he says to me, Tony, it's unsustainable. Does that resonate? He said, Tony, I have a thousand unread emails in my inbox right now, and I can't imagine ever catching up. And I said, oh my god, are any of them important? <laughs> and he said, how would I know? <laughs> right, how would he know? So what are we going to do about this? What are we going to do about this capacity problem? Because up until now, you've been using this resource to get more things done, haven't you? So when there's more to do, what do you invest more of? This. You invest more hours, which is great, of course. I mean, it's not necessarily great. God, you got a blanket over the two of you there? It's a beautiful thing. Wow. This is a casual gig. It's beautiful. So you invest more hours. Well, of course, the problem is that you hit a limit when, when, when you're talking about hours. You've got 24 hours in a day. You've got 168 hours in the week. No congressional legislation is ever going to change that. You're never going to get another hour. And the problem is your dance cards are full, aren't they? There's nobody who's hoping in this audience that I will take a moment here to help you figure out what to do with your free time. You don't have any. So what are we going to do about that? Because demand's going up. This is the way you've built capacity. How do we solve that problem? We solve that problem by letting you go to the bathroom after an hour, meaning we shift the attention from managing your energy, I'm sorry, from managing your time, which is what you do now, to managing your energy. Because energy has three characteristics that time does not. Time is inside you. I'm sorry, time is outside you. It moves past you like a train going off into the distance. Energy is inside you. Therefore, it's something you have the potential to influence. And you can influence it in three ways. You can expand the energy you have available to you by converting one form of energy into another. So you can convert glucose into energy by how you eat. You can convert oxygen into energy by your level of fitness, and so on. It can be regularly renewed. You can actually refuel energy as you experienced in the break so that we ran out of capacity. You ran out of capacity after an hour and 15 minutes. But sure enough, in a very few minutes, you refueled that capacity and came in with a much higher level of energy. And finally, you can learn to use your energy more efficiently, more skillfully, if you make energy important. So that's great. That means we actually have a potential solution. 
Now then we have to ask ourselves, well, what is energy actually? What is energy? And there is another piece of good news. Energy is actually the capacity to do work in physics. Isn't that interesting? And a lot of you would know that. Isn't that interesting that energy is the capacity to work? Because what it suggests is if you have more energy, you have more capacity. So if I can systematically help you to build more energy, that's a transformative piece. Deb started out here talking about transformation. I believe that transformation has to start not in the way you market, not in the way you approach these new markets, not in the way you behave in the external world. It has to start with how you manage yourself. It has to start with the, with the way you manage yourself. And let's see, let's take a moment. I hope you have a pen or a pencil available to you. We're going to do an energy audit. We're going to figure out how well you're managing your energy right now or I should say over the last several years as it cumulatively shows up in this moment. Okay, so everybody take out a piece of paper and a pen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you 20 statements. And I'm going to ask you to just make a check mark for each of the statements that is true for you. If it is 51% true for you, count it as true for you. If you're not sure if it's true for you, or you wish it weren't true for you, take the person who knows you best, put that person on your shoulder and ask, is this true for me? And if that person says yes, I want you to make a check, okay? Now we're gonna do these in four categories. The first category so that you can keep track of it is physical. That's your physical energy, it's the quantity of your energy, it's the core energy source that we all have. Human beings have, as it turns out, four sources of energy and the foundation of all energy is the quantity of energy or your physical energy. So we'll start with that and then we'll move to the other three. I'll say them as we go.